morning, followers, and welcome to uh, Rockius Garden. This is uh, Bird and Butterfly Garden. I'm James, and I'm going to be talking for the next 10 15 minutes about uh, bird and butterfly uh, plants for the garden, uh, and a little bit about creating habit habitat as well in the garden. Uh, just remember, folks, this is a, new, a regular new fixture for us uh, at the weekends, live streaming uh, garden topics. Uh, so next week, uh, it's Friday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and that will be with Sarah. So make sure you tune into that. Uh, so obviously, I don't have an awful lot of time, and I'd love to talk all morning, so I'm going to have to kind of get going here. So uh, habitat, or incorporating habitat into our gardens, is extremely important. Really is. We've lost a huge amount of habitat over the last few years due to development and uh, other situations. So it's it's really beneficial to, to kind of help out and, and create little habitats in our garden. And you don't have to have a, a, an enormous garden, you can have the smallest of balconies uh, and obviously you know, uh, the largest of backyards. You can all play a part in incorporating some uh, butterfly and bird friendly plants into the garden. I generally recommend going with uh, like locally native first and then working your way back to like, similar uh, Mediterranean climate plants. Um, of course, practicing good organic garden techniques is extremely Consider having a water source in your uh, habitat and uh, space. Uh, so I'm going to get started and talk about some of my uh, tried and tested favourites uh, in the garden. Uh, and I'll start with uh, a few natives and then I'll talk about some uh, some tried and tested So the first one would be uh, Salvia windy bloomer. This is a uh, it's a hybrid from our native Lincoln sage. Uh, it's great for both. Butterflies, birds, and foraging birds for the seed. So it, it kind of ticks all the boxes. Uh, the smell on these things is absolutely dynamite. It's incredible. And you can see it's in, it's still got a lot of flowers on there. They generally flower from, um, uh, depending on the variety, from uh, uh, late winter all the way into early summer, depending on how established it is as well. That's a gorgeous, gorgeous scent of plant. Um, the, other, the other one, which is a phenomenal one for butterflies, uh, as a nectar plant uh, for, for even our monarchs as well is this Fabina dalamina and this is a low uh, mounding perennial uh, you can see it's covered in gorgeous little flowers there uh, another great suggestion for your small uh, for your habitat garden and then I'm going to quickly just jump out the camera there and grab this ceanothus now ceanothus is synonymous with uh, in native gardens it's a it, Huge selection of varieties. Uh, it's generally a sub, sh sub shrub. Uh, it's a small tree. You can see, and I'll bring it up to the camera. You can see the, the flowers there. Really, really important for, for butterflies and, and our native bees. Uh, obviously, the concerns with bees at the moment. It's, uh, so it's a real benefit, beneficial uh, shrub for the garden. So you'd, you'd have to have a, a larger space for that one, uh, or a kind of a an open corner which you or void you wanted to fill because they do get quite broad. Uh, and that's Ceanothus Skylark, I should have given its full name, that's Skylark Ceanothus. Uh, another one which we've been really pushing with Rogers recently is the buckwheat. Primarily the coastal buckwheat or California buckwheat, which is uh, uh, Ariaganum uh, fasticularis. This one doesn't really do it much justice. You're probably thinking, why is he showing us that pathetic looking thing? Obviously it's, obviously it's just a young sapling at the moment, but as they fill out, uh, it's incredibly important for our birds, butterflies, and our food. So as a nectar source and as a seed source, and once they, uh, once they do establish and fill with flowers at this time of year, they're actually very, very attractive and make a great texture in the garden. So that would, that's the uh, local native buckwheat. Um, so 
Ciceringium. Ciceringium is, they also call it blue-eyed grass. The flowers aren't open at the moment, unfortunately, but this is another great one um, for our local wildlife. Uh, it actually does very well in semi-shade, so if you don't have an awful lot of sun in your habitat garden, this is one which ticks those boxes. Keep that in mind. Another native. Moving on to some, some of our non-natives, but uh, similar climate, uh, which are going to work for us. And I'm going to call this Penstemon uh, Pseudospectabilis. I love this for its uh, kind of its firm uh, textural uh, foliage and then obviously it's gorgeous pink tubular flowers and obviously this one's popular with hummingbirds uh, that's but it's, the colour is just sensational. I'm not usually a bright pink person but I actually quite like that, that one. And that's uh, that's uh, Pedstman uh, Pseudo Spectrabilis. Uh, oh, excuse me. And then moving on to uh, another Penstemon. And this is a new one. I don't think I've ever seen this in the store before. This is called the Blue Map Penstemon or Penstemon uh, Colorado. I think it's Coloradensis. It's uh, an alpine penstemon from from the from Colorado and uh, kind of uh, the west, some of the western states. Uh, so it stays quite small. It's a gorgeous little plant. So it's great for if you've got kind of a low profile succulent garden and you wanted to soften those succulents. That would be a great situation. Situation. Gado scabiosa. Scabiosa is another uh, uh, yeah, wonderful plant when it comes to uh, encouraging butterflies into the garden. It's a great nectar source for, for all our butterflies. Um, keep in mind these need really good air circulation. I, the only problems I've had with these is uh, mildew. So make sure if you're going to incorporate this into the garden that you have a good airflow. Uh, generally inland I think it's best for these. Um, uh, but they just they just flower all through the season, all through spring and summer, and that would be uh, what, uh, the scabiosa, uh, sometimes called the, uh, the pink cushion as well. Quickly moving on is uh, African basil. Now African basil is the only true perennial basil, uh, and then I'm bringing this up because this thing here is a sterile uh, plant, so it never stops flowering. Um, it's just the bees love it, they really do. You're, you're just getting, obviously bees are important to the garden as pollinators, so you've got to have an African basil in your habitat garden. Also the hummingbirds love them. Uh, obviously that's just a small specimen, they can get up to two to three feet. Um, you do have to do a little bit of pruning with them just to keep them nice and vigorous and uh, keep the foliage a little bit broader and a little bit more ornamental looking. Uh, but it's a phenomenal plant for, uh, for bees and uh, hummers. Uh, quickly moving on here, <clears throat> I've got a whole colony of it behind me here. It's a yarrow, a chilia. A chilia is another important nectar source for, um, for butterflies. Uh, so it's another must have in the garden. There's a huge, there's a huge selection of them, uh, hybrids and different varieties. So uh, the color wise as well, pinks, reds, terracottas, uh, yellows. Uh, there's a native one as well. Moving on to a couple of plants which I mentioned shade earlier on, so we don't all have, unfortunately, not all blessed with full sun all day. This is one which works great in both sun and, sh and semi shade. It's called Phygelius, or the also called it, um, I think, the Cape Fuchsia is the common name for that. Uh, but this is another great one for hummingbirds. Uh, it's got darling little tubular flowers which kind of hang down um, so if you've got if you're not blessed with a lot of sun this is definitely a great one for your, your uh, garden. and that last but not least is Kufia for millionaire it's not just for millionaires it's for everyone I mean, it's great for it's great for uh, again for, for a shady situation um, uh, and it really the hummingbirds just fight over this they sometimes call it firecracker um, but it just it just blooms right through the season. Uh, and as I say, hummingbirds will go crazy over that. It really will. So I hope you've enjoyed my selections. As I say, I can go on a lot longer with different varieties. And uh, feel free to ask any questions. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed my segment this morning. And remember to tune in uh, next time, which will be uh, Friday at 4 p.m. Uh, and that's about it. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, 
Come in and buy some plants. 